Yeah, I could see that. And you said four quarterbacks in the top four. I think the the Cardinals are such a funky one because the Broncos and Raiders obviously can't trade with the Chargers, their division rival for the quarterback. Yeah. So that means they're either going to four or above. So like I could see if Jaden Daniels falls to three, maybe the Raiders just give up the farm to go up and get him. Patriots see like, you know, what the Dolphins did with the trade down with the 49ers. They might, you know, find that enticing to rebuild their whole team. I I just I as long as four quarterbacks go before our pick, I feel confident two of the receivers are gonna go. I feel confident one defensive player is gonna go. And then it's just that Bears pick that just gives me that little bit of like angst and like not sure how it's gonna shake out. Yeah. Um, look, there's also there's also the possibility like Joel probably is going in the top seven. Like there's mm-hmm. Pretty much, be I'd be very shocked if that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. That said, like, what if he's there and the Jets fall in love with Joel and, you know, um, you know, let, let's just say maybe, hey, um, you know, I don't know, their pick eight that Joel is somehow still there because somebody had picked J.C. Latham because they love the mm-hmm. – or Marius Mims or whatever. Because the Titans can go high floor – I mean, high ceiling because of who their offensive line coach is. Mm-hmm. Um, then it's like, hey, do you move up for Joel? Like, I don't, I'm, just, I'm just trying to say, like, there's – there's so many possibilities. I just would like to see the Jets be aggressive here, just knowing all offseason it's been heavy. We've operated on a budget, but we've been aggressive. Mm-hmm. Don't stop that now. Like, don't I wouldn't like go back into like depth mode, like especially in round one. If you could get up to twenty, uh, if you could get up to pick five, and let's say the picks Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, or receiver of choice, whatever it is. Are you okay giving up the 2025 first? Because I think that's probably what you're going to have to do. Yeah, I, I would. Um, I don't know. If you can tell me I could have A.J. Green on a cost-controlled contract for five years at each, you know, in, his, in his absolute prime, playing with Rodgers and whoever, like, oh, by the way, he gets to play next to Garrett Wilson and, and Brees Hall and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like, I don't know, man. Like, are you getting a better player next year's draft? Probably not. You know, like, mm-hmm. I know, ideally – you know, we don't talk about this enough because we're not, you know, we haven't seen the Jets pick outside the top like 15 or 12 in, you know, a decade. But ideally that picks in the 20s, you know, it's a glorified, you know, maybe it's the 28th, 29th, 30th pick where it's almost a second round pick at that mm-hmm. point. Um, I just, you know, I don't know. It's just funny. Like I, you know, you kind of hope that pick means absolutely nothing. And I know people don't want to give it up because we're so attached to these draft picks, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do, right? The Jets last year, you know, gave up, you know, the two twos for Rogers and, you know, this year, like, yeah, it would have been nice to have that too, but you know, it could have been a one, hey, you know, or like whatever, like yeah. it's just, we don't, we never know what's really going to happen, obviously. What's up guys, Matt O'Leary from Talking Jets. If you liked that video, please make sure to subscribe and follow for more New York Jets content.